The end is nigh. It's taken out the trash Thursday, and we are going to finish off the foul beast that is She Hook. Don't go anywhere. You don't want to miss this. Previously on the Nerdy Ronin Network. As the smoke clears, oh man, it's finally done. Happy Thursday, everybody. We're glad you're here. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. Down in the description below are some things we find super cool, and you might as well look at them and see if you find something that you think's amazing as well. Nobody pays us. We just think it's good stuff, especially coffee. So, have a gander. And see if you uh, like any of it. And let us know. <laughs> so how's everybody doing? The work week's almost over. I mean, we're knocking at Friday. We're knocking at the door Friday. Ready to go out with a bang, not a whimper. Unlike what we're talking about today. Which is, of course, the finale. Episode 9 of She-Hulk. And I'll tell you what. It officially has gone out with a whimper, and I've got green notes because I decided I might as well put it to bed. I don't know what else to tell you guys. It officially is over and done. I'm sure they'll give it a second season because things fell upwards at Disney and Marvel and Hollyweird. Let's get right into it. I'm sure you guys have been watching with bated breath to see what was going to happen in the big, huge, fantastic finale. <laughs> I can't say that with a straight face, you guys. I'm so sorry. Oh, all right. Right off the bat, they desecrate the original Incredible Hulk TV show. That's right. Right off the bat, the intro has been changed, and Jen Walters, or Waters, or whatever her name is, has, uh, they put her in place of the old intro from Bill Bixby, Lou Ferrigno, and all, you know, the, the older, where Lou Ferrigno was the Incredible Hulk. Man, that show was awesome. When I was a kid, I used to watch that show, and I, I kid you not, story time, I kid you not, I loved that show as a little kid but it scared the pants off me when that theme music started playing and i would hide behind the couch or the recliner and i'd peek around and all you could see was my fat little eyeballs and i was just waiting for that music to end so i could go sit down and watch the show and it was great it was fantastic if you have never seen the original the incredible hulk tv show from back in the day you should at least watch a couple of episodes because it's fun times. But they've desecrated it. They had to put the millennial moron in place of that. Oh, it's so bad. Uh, so that's how we start. Eh, it was all a dream. Uh, that intro, she wakes up in her prison cell and all her little buddies come in, the lawyers and whatnot. Uh, she's in jail. And she's more concerned with making the online trolls from Intelligentsia pay for what they did and take responsibility for their actions. But not her actions. She's not responsible, nor does she care about that. Because, uh, duh, it's their fault. She even hulked out to begin with. It's their fault for making her angry. She's not responsible. The trolls are. Men are bad, men are bad, blah, blah, that, that, that's the underlying, like, yeah. Uh, so, it turns out that, dun, 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 Todd, the guy she's gone on a date with, 
the super rich dude is Hulk King. He wanted her blood. Okay, first off, he's upset that she didn't earn her Hulk powers. She stole them from the Incredible Hulk. Okay? Everybody, we're all on the same page. Todd starts this whole thing because she didn't earn her powers. She stole them. So his response to that is to hire someone to steal her blood and he works it. He scientifically changes it up so it'll make him have Hulk powers. Congratulations. Makes perfect sense. Because he earned it by stealing it. Hmm. Oh. That is so convoluted, convol convoluted and stupid. I can't say it with a straight face. I just want to bang my head against the microphone. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Michael, the microphone. Just calm down. So, <clears throat> Hulk King Intelligentsia, they're going to have a big meetup, a private meetup. And guess who they've paid to be a guest speaker? Abomination, that's right. Emil Blonsky. <laughs> he shows up to be the guest speaker as a life coach. Now, to be fair, he has no idea. He's not part of this group. They just paid him to come be a, a guest speaker. <laughs> but it means that he has been turning into Abomination, which is part of his, you know, he was released from prison based on the fact that he would not turn into Abomination. So he's breaking the law. Ooh, imagine. So Jen, she walks into this big private meeting because she's looking for Emil Blonsky. All right. This convoluted guard... Titania shows up. <laughs> the paralegal uh, <laughs> nanny lady, <laughs> she shows up. Everybody shows up. The Incredible Hulk shows up. Just, and he's like, ah, all right. So now everybody's here. And it's so confusing and so stupid and makes so no sense. But if you take all the storylines from this season and put them all together this is the rubber ball that you get okay it it was stupid and made no sense the storylines went absolutely nowhere where are they going nowhere so suddenly Jen's breaking the fourth wall talking to us the lowly plebs watching this garbage and says are you happy with this this doesn't make any sense this is complicated and I kid you not, <laughs> suddenly <laughs> the Disney Plus menu show up and she crashes through the little icon for She-Hulk and finds a different one for Marvel Assembles or whatever. I don't even know what that is. I don't care. And crashes through that one and shows up on the backstage lot of Disney slash Marvel Studios in search of the She-Hulk offices and the writer's room. She wanders around till she finds the right building. What? And she goes into the writer's room and the most non-believable thing happens out of this entire series. There's three men working in the writer's room. <laughs> They've said from the very beginning, this is an all-women's writing's room. So, what? And so she argues, she argues with the writers about how garbage this show is. And they say, looky here, this is what Kevin wants. Kevin wants this show to be, he wants this storyline. And she says, where's Kevin? And these people are crazy. So she goes in search of Kevin. Now, everybody watching, if you know anything about Marvel, Kevin Feige is the guy behind Marvel. He's the one that does, in charge of everything. So your assumption is that they're talking about Kevin Feige. But guess what? They're not. Uh, it turns out Kevin stands for a knowledge-enhanced viral or visual 
I can't read my writing. I'm sorry. Let's start again. Knowledge enhanced visual interconnectivity nexus. Oh my goodness. But they're talking about Kevin Feige. Idiots. So she breaks in and she's talking to Kevin and he's like, this show's great. I made this fantastic finale. Why are you grappin'? Why are you messing it up? And she just wants people to be responsible for what their actions, you know, be responsible for their actions. Uh, well, except her, of course. She's destroyed millions and millions of dollars in property and, oh, who cares? But the rest of the people, huh, they slut shame me so they should pay. So she has Kevin take away the blood aspect, which has been in the, one of the main storylines for the entire season, mind you. She has him take away the abomination thing. All right, so it's just Neil Blonsky, and he has to pay for what he's done. All right, and this doesn't... They take out every single storyline that they've had throughout the show. And he says, well, is there anything else? And she said, well, I'd like to see Matt Murdock again. A woman has needs. I kid you not, that's the line. A woman has needs. And Kevin says, historically, we've never really done much about that. Oh. Kevin, have you forgot about the MCU? Have you forgot about Phase Boar? You've done nothing but cram the feminine, the female agenda down the throats of your consumers throwing storyline to the wind for the whole last phase of Marvel. And some of more, some of phase three too. Uh, but anyway, so then he puts her back in the show. Everybody pays their dues except for her. Everything's fine and dandy. Daredevil shows up after everything's over with, and he's like, oh, sorry. And then he stays and has a bunch of sex with her for the next week because he's visiting for a week. Like, and that's the end. That's the end. Neil Blonsky goes back to prison for 10 years for violating his parole, but he was fine with that because karmic justice. But the fact of the matter is, after the credits, you see a scene where Wong actually... Gets Abomination, Neil Blonsky takes him out of prison, breaks him out of prison to give him his freedom on another planet or somewhere. I don't, I don't, I don't care. I don't, I don't care. I'm done. This is, thank goodness, there's a weight lifted off my shoulder. This is the worst garbage. Oh my goodness. I cannot believe. Nerdy wipe wanders through seeing this going on when she's walking through the back lot and talking to the writer's room and she's like this is the most stupid boring crap I've ever seen yep yep so it's official nine month nine weeks ago I was pregnant with a nerdy baby and today I've expelled it and had my baby and its name is She-Hulk and it's garbage. So, I get it. That, that, that didn't make any sense. It made sense to me. This is horrible. Nine weeks of garbage. And they topped it with the last episode. It was even worse. And they just erased everything they did for eight weeks. And everybody's happy. Jen is fine now. She's perfectly fine. She has no inhibitor. She's not in trouble. She's delightful. Regardless of the millions of dollars in damage she's done throughout this show. And she's not responsible. But everybody else. They're responsible. And don't forget. Duh. Men are bad. Trash. This show was trash. And regardless of if they get a second season. This nerd won't be watching it. It was horrible. And shame on them. For desecrating an old TV show. You guys don't have the talent to even talk about the old TV show. Woo! Nerdy is angry. But done with it and happy. So, weight's off my shoulders. Don't care anymore. Thursdays go back to being my day off. 
Congratulations. Whew, I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you liked this show, that's fine. I'm sorry, I don't. And there was enough problems with it that I, it does, doesn't bother me to say it either. You know, if you like this show, it's fine to disagree. It's fine for you to like things that I don't like or me to like things you don't like. I'm not angry about that. I'm angry at the lack of trying. The lack of good entertainment. The lack of caring about the people that pay your paycheck. The fan, you expect the fans to pay for the subscription service or pay to go see a movie and time and again you just shaft the fans and then you say, huh, it's the fans' fault. This show did the exact same thing in the show. It's everybody's fault but She-Hulk. And it's not Marvel. We're amazing. We put out a great product. And all these stupid people don't like it. That's on them. Oh, Michael the Microphone, Bob, Squeaky Chair, and I think they're full of crap. It's too bad. Holly Weird has forgotten where they come from. And who pays the bills and keeps the lights on. So, show's over. Don't care no more. <laughs> no more of these goofy thumbnails I have to make. I appreciate you listening to me talk about it. I know uh, Bushido Blues, I hope this episode, my my commentary on this episode makes you laugh, dude. Uh, I know you're watching. So, hey, everybody, have a great rest of your Thursday. There's, a, there's, there's not going to be any more talk of She-Hulk, thankfully. So we'll be back tomorrow on Friday to discuss something awesome. As per usual. <laughs> you guys keep on trucking. And we'll see you tomorrow. From Michael Microphone, Bob, Squeaky Chair, and this big fat nerd. Y'all have a good rest of your day. <laughs>